We're going to look at the error estimate for the integral test. Now, the regular integral test has all of these hypotheses in it already. So we're going to kind of skip over that. It just says terms that be positive, continuous, uh, has to be decreasing, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of inequalities here. What we really want to focus on are the ones I've highlighted. The first one right here says the remainder. It defines what the remainder is. So if you compute n terms, if you get the partial sum of n terms, how close is that going to be? So here's the partial sum of oops, partial sum of n terms right there. How close is that going to be to the actual infinite sum? It's going to be Rn close. And how do we compute Rn? We compute it. We don't get an equality, but we get an estimate for the error. Now there's a lower and an upper bound. The lower bound doesn't matter. So this one's not really useful, so ignore that. The upper bound's the one that's useful, so I highlighted it. Okay. So let's go ahead and use this on some examples. So this we have uh, 1 over n cubed. Uh, this does converge because it's a p series where p is 3. Uh, so we're not asked, does it converge or not? This is a partial sum question, so we want to compute S10. I'm not going to compute S10 because that's just adding up 10 of these terms. I don't have a calculator right here, so I'm not going to spend time doing that. But I am going to estimate the error. So part A. So the error, if we computed 10 terms, above it was called Rn, capital N right there. And... That's the estimate we're going to use. So it's less than integral n to infinity of fx dx. Our function, f of x, if you've hopefully done some comparison, some uh, integral tests already, you're just replacing this 1 over n cubed. Uh, you're just replacing n by x. So it's 1 over x cubed. That's f of x. And we're going to go ahead and this s10, n is 10. We're going to compute from 10 to infinity the error. So this would be r10 is less than this integral x cubed dx. OK. I'm going to do this really quickly. This is an improper integral. It needs to be turned into a limit. 10 to alpha x negative 3 dx. Add 1 to the exponent when you take an antiderivative, x to the negative 2 divided by that exponent from 10 to alpha, lim, alpha approaches infinity. All right, so this is negative 1 half x squared. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in the values now negative 1 over 2 times, oh, we'll do the alpha first, obviously. Alpha squared, that one's going to disappear because alpha is getting really big in the denominator. And the last term, so this first one will be uh, negative 1 over 2 times infinity squared, so the whole thing is going to 0, plus 1 over 10 squared is 100 times 2 is 200, plus 1 over 200. All right, so this is 1 over 200. Uh, the first one went to 0, so it just disappears. All right, this was an upper bound for R10. So R10 was less then every all these steps over here, so R10 is less than this last thing on the bottom. It was less than that. Um, it won't even be equal, it'll just be less. All right, uh, you can turn that into a decimal if you want to. Uh, it's pretty small, obviously 1 200th uh, 0 0.005, something like that. All right, it's a pretty small error. Okay, so that is the error estimate we just did. Now, part B, similar but different. Part B, we don't know what n value we need to get this error within right there, 0 0.000, or 0 0.001. So, part B, they tell us our n needs to be less than 
0 0.001, 0 0.001, yes. Okay. So what we need to do is make sure this is less than the integral. We don't know n. But we can compute this antiderivative without knowing n. We did basically all the work earlier. The only difference is, I'll just highlight every place that n appears. So it was 10 before. So 10. Oh, wow. Oh. That's not infinity, even though it looks like it's a double zero. All right, so I'm just going to go to the right the top. You can absolutely take this uh, antiderivative here and uh, plug in the limit, but I'm going to shortcut it. It's all the exact same work as above. Negative 1 over 2x squared from big N to alpha. All right, so we have, plug in alpha first. This term will go to zero. Two alpha squared is minus a negative, so it's plus one over two n squared. So the first term that goes to zero, so that's disappearing. And we just get one over two n squared. Okay, and we need this to be Oh, we want the error less than that. N squared. So Rn is less than that number. So we're going to replace Rn by that number. All right, all we need to do is solve for n. So a few things we could do. Uh, I'll multiply by 2n squared. Now, multiplying is a dangerous move with an inequality because if you multiply by a value that could be negative, your inequality flips. However, n, there's no way it's going to be negative uh, because your smallest n value is 1, and they get bigger after that. So n is bigger, 1 or bigger. But uh, anyways, it's certainly greater than 0. So this whole term is going to be positive. This particular problem had an n squared, which additionally fo forces it to be positive, but just the fact that n is positive, even if this was a cube, I'd still be okay multiplying by it. So I'm multiplying by 2n squared. Again, it's okay because 2n squared is always positive. Uh, 2n squared, this would be a tenth, hundred, thousandth. So this is 1 over 1,000. That's a way to rewrite that decimal. Now well, let's multiply by 2,000. Square root. Uh, calculator. Square root. Forty-four. All right, point seven two. So we do need to round this up, and that is important. So n. I think our inequality is flipped. I don't like the way that it's looking. So forty-four point seven two, because this should be for that value or bigger, we're okay. All right, so the answer is going to be 45. Uh, however, uh, it's just rounded up just to be safe. Just a minute. All right, so I did want this to be true. So Rn is less than, so I agree that that's true. I'm a little worried about what I did after that. So I think what I should have done is put the number on this side because I wanted to make sure that these are less than that number. What I did do instead, and this is incorrect, 
I put it over on this side. Anyways, we're going to put that value over here. So I want to make sure that that error estimate is less than that value. And usually you want your inequalities to line up like this. So it goes small, medium, big. Um, you don't want to have two opposing inequalities like this. Uh, that's generally not good. All right, so basically if you look at this right here, the point zero zero one is on the greater side of the inequality. So this inequality just flips and it would flip all the inequalities afterwards as well. So it needs to be greater than 44. You can't have a partial sum of 44.72. So you just let n equal 45 or more. So if you add up 45 terms, you'll have the error smaller than 0 0.001. So this means the partial sum of 45 terms has error less than 0 0.001. Okay, so 45 would be how big n or more is how big n has to be. The reason you can go more is because you could add the first hundred terms and you'll have a small uh, you'll have a smaller error than if you stopped at 45. But you only need to go to 45 to ensure that your error is that small.